Before we get into today's video, I did want to let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance in hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope everybody's getting geared up for New Year's. Y'all, it's about to be 2022. Is this crazy? It feels crazy. I mean, I was born in the 80s, like in the 1900s. That really feels like you know, like when, when us in the 1900s, <laughs> us 1900s babies heard about people that were born in the 1800s, like we're the 1900s now. Anyways, so what are y'all going to be doing to bring in the new year? You know, there's that old saying that is, however you bring in the new year is how you will spend the rest of your year. And um, I know for us, I will be with my family as per usual. So what will y'all be doing? Let me know in the comment section down below. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the extremely, extremely highly requested Kendrick Johnson case. Now, this is one of those stories or cases or situations um, that sticks with you. When you hear this, if you really go down the rabbit hole of it, it's, a, it's an unforgettable situation, in my opinion. Now, spoiler alert, up until a few months ago, my opinion on this case has always been Kendrick Johnson, there, there could have been foul play involved in this Kendrick Johnson case. Okay, he was a 17 year old boy that got up, got on his school bus to go to school one day and did not come home. And when I researched it in the past, and I did research it, I felt like there could definitely be some foul play. Now recently, especially since the new documentary came out, and I'm gonna tell you guys all about that, my opinion has changed. And if you wanna know my opinion, then you're gonna to have to stay to the end of the video because like in every single video that I do, I'm gonna tell you guys the whole entire story first, and then I'm gonna tell you guys what I think, what I think happened at the end. So let's just start at the beginning. Kendrick Johnson was 17 years old and a sophomore in high school when he got up in January of 2013, got on his bus, headed to school, and never returned. Kendrick was about 5 foot 10, long beautiful locks, big soft beautiful eyes, a big bright smile, a bright future ahead of him, and a lot of people that loved him. Kendrick was an honor roll student. He played basketball and also had dreams of playing professional basketball after high school one day. Kendrick lived with his mother and his father, Kenneth and Jackie, who met in Valdosta, Georgia and lived in Valdosta, Georgia their whole entire lives. Their family was there. They were very, very close knit. Kendrick's mother, Jackie, had her sisters there and Kendrick's father drove trucks for a living, like the big semi trucks. So he was on the road a lot, but he talked to his children all the time, like on a regular, regular basis. Kendrick had a brother and a sister and they would go on to have children of their own. So Kendrick was an uncle as well. He was just surrounded by love. He had his grandmas, his, his uncles and his aunts and his cousins and you know, his big sister and his, like he was just, so loved in a very close, tight-knit family. On January 9th of 2013, Kendrick's father, Kenneth, talked to him on the phone. Kendrick's father said that this was the last phone conversation that they would have, unfortunately, but that Kendrick asked him if he got him a new truck, you know, the new semi, and they were talking about that and everything was good. 
The next morning on January 10th, Kendrick got up like he typically does. He got ready for school. He kissed his mama goodbye. He went and got on the school bus and he headed off to school. That afternoon when the school bus came back around, Kendrick's mom noticed that he did not get off of the school bus, which he was a 10th grader, but at any age is enough to make your heart start beating out of your chest, right? When that school bus stops and you look out the window and you see all the kids get off and your baby boy ain't on it, okay? So she went out there and she went to talk to the bus driver. She said, hey, where's Kendrick at? She said, he didn't ride my bus home today. And she said, well, what do you mean? She said, he didn't get on this afternoon. He didn't ride the bus home. So his mom being confused, she went in and contacted his sister. Like maybe his sister had picked him up from school. Maybe he was at his sister's house. She hadn't seen him. His brother hadn't seen him. She contacted his father. His father hadn't heard from him since the night before when they talked about the semi truck. His father started calling around. He contacted his mother. Nobody could find Kendrick. And they spent most of the night just calling people, searching around and looking for Kendrick. At around 12 a.m., Kendrick's mother called the police and they came over to do a report. Now, this is when Kendrick's mother, Jackie, said that the cops kind of insinuated to her maybe he was with a girl. Maybe he was with some fast-tailed girl is what his mother said, which really disturbed me because that's the same exact thing that the cops told Jelani Day's mom when her 25-year-old son, who was going to school to be a doctor and never been in trouble, had his whole bright future ahead of him, that's the same thing that they insinuated to her as well. Now, I do know that maybe they're trying to be helpful, you know, calm a mom down, you know, you got... These two young, you know, successful, good looking guys, maybe they're, you know, with a girl, but let's, I don't know. I don't know. It, it obviously, these mothers, it rubs them wrong. It rubs me wrong too. Anyways, so he insinuated to her, maybe he's with some fast tail girl. She said, no, you don't understand my family. You don't understand my son. We don't roll like that. This is a school night. He knows to be his butt home and something is wrong. Kendrick's mom, Jackie, would later say that that night she knew her baby was gone. She felt it. She knew it. At the same time, Kendrick's father, Kenneth, said that he was driving his semi truck and he just felt that his son was no longer with us. And that he had to pull over on the side of the road because he was so upset. He had to lay down in the back of his truck because he knew that his baby boy Kendrick was gone. The next day, Kendrick's mother and his big sister headed off to the high school to see what they could find out. I mean, somebody knows something. He got on that school bus. He went to school. He saw somebody. Some, somebody knows something. They were at the school, they were talking to, you know, the resource officer, they were talking to the principal, they were trying to talk to students. And then before you know it, there was a big commotion going on at the school. Something was going down in the gymnasium. The mother of Kendrick and his sister got word that there was a student's body that had been found in the gymnasium. Kendrick's mother hit her knees right then and there. She's crying, she's upset, she's hollering. I mean, she just knows. She already knew the night before that her baby was gone and she, this was like, she just knew it. The school resource officer comes to her and says, why are you yelling? What's wrong with you? Basically like allegedly, and I'm putting all of this in my own words. The whole entire video is allegedly because I'm just telling this in my own words. Okay. You guys go and research this for yourself. School resource officer comes out to her and is basically like, why are you hollering? Like, you don't know if that's your son. And she said, has any other parent reported their child missing? Or is, I mean, was there one on every corner? Could it be her, her son or her son? I mean, who else's son is missing? So stuff's going on in the gymnasium. Nobody's telling her anything. Her son's been missing. There's a body in there. She's convinced it's her son. And they come out and they show her a picture of a tennis shoe. Was this Kendrick's tennis shoe? And she said, yes. And that's how she knew right then and there for sure. She knew already that that was her baby in there. And the resource officer, she asked him if he had dreads and they said yes. And so it, it, she knew she wanted to see her baby boy, but they would not allow her in there to see him. 
She would later say, her and Kendrick's sister would say that even though they knew that there was a body in the gymnasium, school went on business as usual. People were switching classes. They were going to lunch. I mean, they weren't going in and out of the gymnasium too much, but they had already been in there because they found his body at 1030 AM on January 11th. They had already been having school basketball playing in the gymnasium all morning until then. And so this is a crime scene at this point and, and kids is just, you know, stomping all over the place. Now, it was later said, and there were some interviews done, that some kids went into the gymnasium and there are these mats in the gymnasium, okay? These are big, tall mats that you roll up. Now, you can use these mats for all different types of things. You can do them for wrestling class. You can use them for tumbling, stretching, all different reasons to use these big, thick mats. Well, when they are rolled up, they're six feet tall and very heavy. These aren't the little blue thin mats you're using in kindergarten, okay? These are big, big industrial size mats for high schoolers. The high schoolers that morning had went into the gymnasium and they went, what they would typically do was throw their shoes inside the holes, like when the, mat, the mats were standing up, rolled up, and there's, you know, the hole down the middle. They would throw their shoes in there and then they would push the mat over and pull their shoes out from the bottom. Some way, somehow, some of the students went over to the mats, they pushed it over, they realized that there was a human in it, they began to unroll it, they could smell a smell that they said that they would never ever forget, and they realized that the student that was in there was no longer alive. That's when they got a hold of like the resource officers and the police and all that, and they, they realized that they had um, a dead child inside of this mat that was rolled up and standing up. Now, somebody from the school brought a wheelchair out for Kendrick's mother to sit in because she was not, you know, able to stand. They weren't really telling her anything. She was outside of the gymnasium. She was crying. Kendrick's mother's sister, who was Kendrick's aunt, would later say that when she got to the school and saw her sister sitting there in that wheelchair, that she looked like she had been drugged, like she was not herself, like her soul had left her body, like any real mother would look when they're finding out that their child has is dead. Not too long after all of this was going on, one of the police officers came out and told Kendrick's mother, Miss Jackie, that there was no foul play, that this was obviously some sort of freak accident, and they could tell that there was no foul play. Immediately, that obviously made Kendrick's mom go, how do you, how do you know? We've been here for a few hours. Like, you, there's not even been an investigation. Like, I ain't even seen my baby's body yet. How are you gonna tell me there's no foul play? Like, he was, she couldn't even see it. Like he's rolled up in a mat. Where do you, how did he get, you know, it was very confusing to her and she knew immediately that something was wrong. The medical examiners ended up coming and getting Kendrick's body and taking his body away. And of course the family did not get to see it. Well, as time went on and they just basically tried to close the case and say, hey, you know, it's freak accident. He's dead, nothing to see here. The family became, <laughs> suspicious and they needed more answers like any family would and so they decided that they were going to get together with their family and the people in the community that were willing and they were going to go down to the courthouse and they were going to do a little rally until they got to see their child's body at least because they weren't even getting to see Kendrick's body to identify them or their self all they had seen at this point was a picture of a shoe and they wanted to see their baby boy they were out at that rally for about an hour and a half before they got a phone call from the coroner's office asking them if they wanted to come down and see Kendrick's body. They of course said yes. Now when they got to the coroner's office, Kendrick's father, Kenneth, would say the first thing he remembers is when he walked into that coroner's office, it was, it was like hotter than usual, like it was unusually warm. He said that in his mind he thought, Okay, maybe it's not that it's warm in here. Maybe it's just that I'm upset. I know I'm getting ready to see my son's body and maybe it's me. He said that they walked him over to, you know, those big metal things where they pull out the drawers where they keep the bodies and they pulled out the drawer. He said when they pulled out the drawer, he noticed that he got a gush of cool air and then he got a gush of really hot air and to him, it just struck him as odd. They took the body bag, they unzipped the body bag all the way down to his toes. They pulled the body bag open. And this is when they all gasped. 
the person, the child, the human that they saw laying there in that bag looked nothing like their son, Kendrick. Now this was indeed Kendrick, but it looked nothing like him. He was completely deformed. Now there's photos of Kendrick all over the internet. You're more than welcome if you would like to Google them and you can see them. Um, they went viral years ago and we'll get to that in a second, but um, I'm not going to add any of those photos here, but it, when you see them, if you see them, and if you don't want to see them, just let me tell you right here, this photo right here of Kendrick with this bright, beautiful smile and these like beautiful locks and these, these just soft, gentle eyes, just, just a precious baby, 17 year old, had his whole life ahead of him, looked absolutely nothing like the body that they found, okay? His face was all deformed, his lips were swollen, his face was swollen. The blood had obviously rushed to his head because he had been upside down. That's anything or anybody, if you if you take a human and turn them upside down, dead or alive, the blood is gonna rush down there, right? Like, it was just a scene that they were not expecting to see. As time went on, the medical examiners that were provided by the state at this point, okay, said that he died from positional asphyxia, which is like suffocating because of the position that you were in. Now, it has later been explained that in order to have that, it's because you're upside down, and when you're upside down like that and the blood is rushing to, you know, the... the this part of your body, your organs began to fa fail and they, you know, your lungs fill up with blood and you suffocate from that. So that is what they were told he passed away from. The family was still not convinced. They wanted more answers. They felt like, okay, how did he end up in this, in this mat? Well, the school and the investigators told them that Kendrick, there was these big, you know, the big mats had been rolled up six feet tall, very heavy mats that Kendrick threw his shoe down into the middle of them like most kids do, you know, because they get there and they change their shoes for PE or they take them off to stretch, whatever reason why they, they take their shoes off, many reasons, and they throw them into the mats and instead of pushing the mats over like they typically do, that they believe Kendrick climbed on top of the mats, climbed down into the mat to get his shoes and then got stuck and could not get himself out. But when Kendrick's father specifically saw his body in that body bag, Kendrick looked like more happened. He looked like he had been in a fight. The way his face was, the way his lips were, it looked like he had been jumped to be specific, but the investigators and the cops told him, nope, nope, definitely wasn't that. He just, it was a freak accident. Kendrick's parents felt helpless. I mean, if the state is saying this, if the coroners are saying this, like, you know, what What more? What, what more can we do? And they really wanted an investigation to be held. Not long after that, the photo of Kendrick from his autopsy, the one that you can see all over the internet now, um, there's all of his photos are very easily accessed because this case has been so high profile, but it went viral online. And Kendrick's mom would later say that when she saw his photo going viral in that way online, it was the worst day of her life life to see that like that but she ended up taking that pain that she felt and turning it into fire to find out what happened to her son and because of that they ended up pushing even harder when that photo went viral so much of the public became became outraged i mean you would see this one beautiful photo of this young man you know this precious young man honor roll student basketball player well loved i mean just kind eyes, you see them, you know, in most moms that were seeing this and dads and family members, grandparents, you know, you think about, you put your child on the school bus to go to school, you expect them to come home, right? And like every parent that was seeing this in the community was becoming upset and the outrage grew. And so people started to protest and they were protesting everywhere. They were protesting in front of 
the medical examiners, they were doing, there was even a group of uh, people that were walking. And for four days straight, they walked 17 miles a day, one mile to honor every year of Kendrick's life. And there was interviews that, you know, cause the media was coming out there reporting on it. There's interviews of people just like crying out to the camera and saying like, how would you feel if this was your child? How would you feel if you sent your son to school and he never came home? You know, it was just, it really, really pulled on your heartstrings if you had a heart at all. And what it seemed like to me specifically is that the family was just wanting a real investigation. You know, they were wanting real answers at this time. How did this happen? All of these years at this high school and no other students ever climbed down into this mat. Why would he climb down into this mat? And this is when Kendrick's father posted this photo right here on the internet and said, how could he squeeze into the gym mat? Also, Kendrick's best friend at school would say that when he heard that Kendrick crawled down into the mat. That's all he had to hear to know that it was BS. Like he knew better. He knew that Kendrick did not climb into that mat. And when I watched the documentary, the documentary is Finding Kendrick Johnson, and it will be linked down below, but watch it for sure if you're interested because there is so much evidence and proof in this documentary, things that I had never seen before. And it's really worth the while. If you're on the fence, even just watch it. You guys go and watch it, okay? So in this documentary, they really showed Kendrick's size versus this mat. Now, here's a photo right here. When those mats were standing straight up, they are six feet tall. Kendrick Johnson was five foot ten. He was almost literally the exact length of the mat. Why would he climb down into these mats, these big, heavy, heavy mats? Also, when they measured the width of the hole of the mat, the width is about 14 inches. Kendrick Johnson's shoulders were 19 inches. It's, it's, it's unfathomable to think that he would have crawled down in to this mat. There were so many other unsettling things about this case, like, when his body was found upside down in the mat like this, it is said that he had one hand over his head. It is also said that he had vomited and he was bleeding, okay? But he also had shoes, so he's in the mat like this. There were shoes at the bottom, a pair of shoes, no shoes on his feet, and a pair of shoes on the top, like somebody had threw the shoes in after him. But also when he had his hand above his head like this and he had vomited, there was no vomit on the shoes that were at the bottom or blood. On one shoe, I believe there was nothing on. Maybe it was on both, but one for sure. And so his mother was always asking like, how could he be upside down like that? Bleeding and he vomited and nothing beyond that shoe that was right underneath him. There was just so many unanswered questions that did not make sense. Also, typically when a body is found, the medical examiner is called immediately. But in this case, the medical examiner was not called until after five hours of the body being found. What were they doing for five hours that they didn't call the medical examiner? I mean, that's the person that pronounces a body dead. I mean, you have a kid in a high school. It just... None of it made any sense. It also showed that the body had been moved and compromised. And these are some, these are just so disturbing. There was blood, you guys, in the gymnasium on the walls. Okay, it's blood dripping and splattering. There was also a shoe, a tennis shoe that was in there that had what seemed to be blood on it and a random hoodie that seemed to have blood on it. None of these things were taken into evidence. Everything in that gymnasium should have been taken into evidence. If there was a lollipop stick, it should have been taken into evidence. This is a crime scene. But because immediately they chucked it up as freak accident, it seems allegedly that they didn't investigate any of that stuff. Well, later, when people that were in charge were asked why they did not do anything with the blood that was dripping on the wall, I mean, I don't know about you guys' gyms at y'all's high schools, but at my high schools, we didn't have blood dripping down the wall, okay? They said, the representative said, oh, it, that wasn't Kendrick's blood. It was tested for Kendrick's blood, but it wasn't his blood. Well, whose blood was it then? Was it somebody that maybe got into a fight with Kendrick? Was it 
Whose blood was it if it wasn't Kendrick's? That's important. To me, it's a lot more important if it wasn't his blood than if it was his blood, you know? And then this is the part, and if you guys watch the documentary, this is the part that's really gonna make your mind spin. There were four cameras in that gymnasium, okay? Four working cameras. And it is said that they're motion sensor cameras, right? But so they come on when there's any kind of motion in the gymnasium, there's four. Most of you guys know the way a gymnasium is shaped, right? Four corners, four cameras, covered every single angle of that gymnasium. All four cameras had blank spots in the exact time that needed to be seen. So you got four working cameras, but none of those cameras pick up on the exact time and moments that needed to be seen. Two of the cameras had turned off or did not record at 11.05. Two of them did not record at 12.04 for like a couple hours. It also showed that there were cameras in the hallway of the school that were showing like the door of going into the gym. It showed seven different males walking in to that gymnasium around in that, in that time frame, which tells us that they should have picked up on the motion censoring aspect of it because they were literally walking in, but it does not show what they were doing in the gym. These cameras do show Kendrick walking into the gym, but that's it. Shows him running across the gym, doesn't show what happened to him, doesn't show him crawling into the mats, doesn't show him being put into the mats, it doesn't show anything, which seems like the cameras have been tampered with. Now, if this was not a freak accident, who in the world would want to hurt Kendrick? Well, the rumor goes that there was a boy that he got into a fight with at high school named Brian. So the story that is told, and you guys, if you watch the documentary, you will hear this from his friend, from Kendrick's friend. They were on the bus one day and he described this guy, Brian, as like, you know, kind of a bully. I, I know, I know kids like, or I've known kids like this that, you know, he was, Kendrick and him were sitting in the back of the bus and he was kind of clowning on Kendrick and like sort of pulling his, his locks and stuff, basically trying to laugh and punk him. You know, y'all know them people that try to make it seem like it's a joke, but really they're kind of putting hands on you and kind of bullying you in front of everybody. And Kendrick didn't like it and he stood up and they, they squared up and they started to fight. Now it is said that Kendrick got the best of this kid, Brian. Now the guy, Brian, or the kid, Brian, that went to school with him, also had a brother that went to that school and their father was a high profile FBI agent. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Not a security guard, not a, not a patrol officer, but an FBI agent. Now Kendrick's father would go on to say that after that fight, Kendrick came home from school one day and said, dad, guess what? And Kendrick's dad said, what? And he said, I was at school today and Brian's dad, the FBI agent, came up to me at school and stopped me and said, hey, that fight you had with my son wasn't a fair fight. Why don't you come to my house and fight him there? And Kendrick's father said, well, what did you say? He said, man, I looked at him like he was crazy and I walked off. Kendrick's father obviously felt like, why are you up at the school talking to my son like that? I mean, I would, boy, I'm going to tell you what, that's, I can't imagine how he felt as a father to know another kid's father came up to the school and told him to come to his house and fight his son. Oh yeah, right. Well, it is said that the guy, Brian's father, the FBI agent, ex-FBI agent now, will get there denies ever saying that, that that never, ever, ever happened. So there was just a lot of rumors that, and people that believe that that day in the gymnasium, the guy, Brian and his brother, maybe friends, whoever, maybe not none of them, but somebody caught Kendrick in the gym by himself, beat him up, jumped him, took it too far and he, he didn't, you know, he didn't live some of the trauma to his head or his something, some, some part of the trauma ended Ken Kendrick's life and they freaked out. They put him in that mat, they rolled it up and left. Then there's people that think that they told their FBI agent dad and he came there and he got rid of security camera footage and he did what he had to do. And, 
um, covered it up. And then it became a big cover up. That is what a lot of people believe. And then there was a lot of people that believe that it was still just a freak accident. Kendrick's parents ended up hiring their own person to do an autopsy. So they went and they dug Kendrick's body back up, which is, I can't even imagine doing that as a parent, but they dug his body back up. They had his body dug back up and they went to go and do another autopsy and get their own autopsy done to see what that person would say was the cause of death. When the guy took his body to do his autopsy and he went to cut Kendrick's chest open, he opened Kendrick's chest and realized that all of his organs were missing. Yeah, inside of his chest was rolled up balls of newspaper, like Black Friday sales, milk on sale, BOGOs, like newspaper. And the coroner, or the guy that's doing the autopsy is like, what happened to his organs? And so Kendrick's family is all upset. They contact the other people that did the autopsy and they said, we have no idea. We put all of his organs back into his chest, sewed it back up, sent them to the funeral home. The funeral home said, we don't know what happened. We didn't, we didn't, you know, we don't know what happened. So there was this big, huge confusion about who to, who removed his organs, what happened to them, where are they, and all of that. So because of that, the new person doing the autopsy was not able to check his lungs to see if it was actually what they said it was, which was the positional asphyxia. Well, that guy ended up going and pulling the paperwork that the state did the first time on the first autopsy, and he looked at the weight of the lungs, and he realized that the weight of the lungs of Kendrick's at the time of death was a normal weight of lungs. Because of that, the gentleman doing the autopsy report said that he knew that he could not have died from positional asphyxia because when that happens, the lung fills with blood, they become very heavy, and that's how you die. If they were a normal weight, that means that he was already dead when he was put in the mat. As he continued to do the autopsy, that is when he realized that Kendrick's jaw and head and chest had blunt force trauma like he had been in a fight. Because of this, the family obviously left with more answers, but also a sense of like, I knew it, you know, this is proof that something is wrong or was wrong with this investigation. And the investigation was not done right. Now this happened in 2013. And since then, there's been a lot that's come out, you guys. I mean, there's been an email that said that somebody has admitted that it was this person. They did a lie detector test on the FBI agent and his two boys, the Brian, and they passed it. Now there's, and they're, of course, they're denying, they said they had nothing to do with anything. And these young boys, actually, they lost their college scholarships because of this. I mean, and so if they didn't have anything to do with it, then they are being held to account for something that they did not do, okay? But there's also people that believe that because their dad was an FBI agent, that they learned how to pass a polygraph and that that's how they got away with it. So I don't personally know if they did it or not, and I can't say that. All I know is that I believe that he did not crawl down into that mat. There is way, way more evidence that shows that there is foul play in a cover-up than not. I, I actually don't see how they come to the conclusion that it was just an accident. And allegedly, there were other students, because you know the students were being interviewed and there was different people that were saying that these boys, Brian and his brother, wanted to fight Kendrick and was going to catch him because Kendrick had a girl that the other boy liked, just all that kind of high school drama and that they said that they were going to fight him. Well, later on, it, it is alleged that some of the students said that the FBI father was doing his own interviews with them, which he should have never been doing. Now, this is all alleged, of course, because I wasn't there. But there, there was even students saying that this FBI agent father was following them to their jobs and sitting outside of their work and basically intimidating them not to say anything. So it is a big, huge mess. And um, Kendrick's mother actually has a TikTok account. This is the name of her TikTok account right here. And she talks a lot about Kendrick on there and she shows his photo all the time. And you can just tell that she is a mother that 
has never been the same, will never be the same, and will never give up until she finds some sort of answers about what happened to her son. And um, I really hope and pray that she gets those answers one day. You never know. You never know. Somebody knows something. Somebody knows something. There's no way that the cameras, all four cameras, just happen to not film that. You know what I mean? There's no, there's no, that the blood on the wall just happened to not match, you know, what? It didn't match him, but who did it match? There's just too many things that don't make sense. And um, it's hard. And what do I think? I, I, I've, like I've said, I, I think that there's foul play. I think, I don't know exactly what happened, but I do not think that he crawled down into that mat. I don't know if he got jumped. I don't know if he was rolled into that mat. If, I don't know, you know, and his shoes were thrown in on top. I do tend to think that that's probably what happened. I think that there was probably a jumping, a fight. I think it was took too far. And then he was rolled up into that mat. And then um, shoes were thrown in to hide it. And then maybe somebody that had resources came in and wiped the cameras. That would be about it. But I do not think for sure, in my personal opinion, that he crawled down into that mat. What do you think? Let me know in the comment section down below. You guys go and watch that documentary if you haven't. If you've been somebody that's always leaned towards it being an accident, just go and watch that first so you know all of the evidence because I'm not even telling y'all but a smidgen of the evidence. You guys, if y'all saw all of this, the stuff that went on with professionals, It'll, it'll terrify you. It really will terrify you. So let me know what you think in the comment section down below. As always, my loves, thank you so, so much for watching this video. Please do not forget to like it. It's a free way that you can help your girl out. And until next time, I love you guys so, so, so very much. And I'll see y'all on the next video. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. We are, we are dreaming in the dark We are nothing more than dust Search but you stay lost We are